Example three of section 641 is our friend the infinite solenoid with n turns per unit length with the current i and we're going to fill this with material of susceptibility chi m. Um, so we're just you know with the loops there and so k hat is going to point uh, along the axis up here and phi is going to point around um, cylindrical coordinates of course. So um, the h vector is super duper easy to calculate now, no matter what material is on the inside it depends only on the free current so following Ampere's law we get that um, so the b vector is going to be uh, proportional to um, the h vector but we, we're given chi m the susceptibility not the permeability so we have to put it in this form of the h vector which is n I k hat. Okay. So um, if the field is paramagnetic, then chi m is greater than one, zero. It's positive, and so the B field gets stronger. If it's diamagnetic, then chi m is less than zero, and B gets weaker. Okay. So um, um, and so the surface current, we're going to have a surface current that either aligns with the, the looping wires or uh, that's going to oppose it. And we can calculate the surface current. That's just the magnetization cross the n hat. And what's the magnetization? Well, that's just chi m the h. There's h. So we have chi m n i k hat cross the normal vector, right? And that'll just give us chi m n i in the phi hat direction, okay? And so you can see that if chi m is, is bigger than zero, then this, this uh, bound current goes along with the current, that the free current that was put in there. If it's, if it's less than zero, then the bound current will go opposite to the free current that we had. So that kind of gives you a, a good rule of thumb for what's happening with the bound, uh, the bound current and how it responds to the free current that you subjected to. So interesting stuff. Have fun. Take care. Bye.